being bright and breezy in the morning isn't everybody's <laughs> cup of tea, is it? But, uh, you know, I don't understand why people don't put their hat and their scarf on before they go to bed, because when you wake up, you feel like getting out of bed and ready for the day because you're dressed for it. Uh, so, a little hint or tip <laughs> for the morning uh, from us at Mirador. It is looking good, and it's looking good for the next couple of days as well. And uh, those of you who uh, do care to follow our television uh, service on Mirador uh, might like to follow us uh, with our weather. It's only about a minute long, but it's a jolly way of uh, showing what's happening in the next couple of days so you don't get into too much detail. You get a little bit of fun out of the pictures that we show, and uh, uh, we do actually give an accurate weather forecast, or as accurate as anybody can be, as the uh, the, the, the real guy, as the weather guys are. Uh, so that's a little hint or tip for the morning. What's going on across the uh, the, the, the region that uh, is of, of some importance? Uh, well, I, I see that uh, uh, somebody, some experts, uh, I'm very fond of chocolate chocolate cakes. <laughs> I, I, I drink hot chocolate rather than coffee most of the time. Um, a little chocolate here and a little chocolate there. And uh, my corpulence, as you see me toddling down the high street, uh, undoubtedly is, uh, is due to my fondness for chocolate. But the, the experts say that it doesn't matter what you eat, as long as you eat it before three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you'll be healthy. The, the healthy way to take food is to eat it before 3 p.m. Uh, so uh, rush out. Um, why don't I have a lunch at breakfast uh, and dinner at lunchtime? And then you can have a little snack at about uh, 2.55 <laughs> before quitting for the day uh, um, and uh, finishing your meal. So there you are. That's what the experts say before three o'clock. Another thing of some concern, particularly since we are a region that is full of gardens and ponds uh, and uh, with, with fish and uh, sometimes uh, have problems with herons and, and so on. But uh, apparently there is a plague spreading from the east on uh, uh, toads and frogs. Uh, so I think we've got to be a little bit careful with uh, our toads and frogs because we are encouraged to make sure that they thrive in our ponds and in our waterfalls and so on and so forth that we have in the garden. But there is a real threat to them, apparently starting. So um, keep an eye open for it, read about it, and make sure that we don't lose that wonderful heritage that we've got in terms of wildlife in our gardens. I see that the Red Arrows are coming back to Eastbourne for the air show. That's terrific. Uh, that, it's a wonderful show. Uh, once when I was in Canada, I was invited to fly with the uh, the Golden Hawks, which is the Canadian equivalent. And uh, I, I set off uh, and uh, it was one of the great disappointments of my life. I, I missed it by about 15 minutes because I got into a traffic jam and I would have flown out of a town called Chilliwack in uh, southern British Columbia uh, and uh, had gone through the whole thing with them. Um, I think you need to have a bit of nerve to do that, but uh, in uh, my younger days, like everybody else, I thought I was immortal and uh, I would have had a go. Uh, so it was a disappointment in my life, but I shall watch the Red Arrows with uh, with some uh, considerable uh, interest as they fly over the Eastbourne in the air show there. So don't miss it. It's a, it's a great day out, but uh, um, do make sure that you make preparations because the trains are jammed and the town is jammed and everybody gets down there. Uh, it's a terrific day. Um, the clouds, of course, can affect the performance and uh, there is some real evidence that uh, scientists in China are trying hard to make it rain, to find ways of making it rain. Um, and uh, they, they're using huge parts of uh, their vast country to experiment. I don't know how they'll make out, but I do know that the reverse is true because I was in Moscow on one occasion on Moscow Day, which is a celebration that the Russians have, uh, um, much I suppose like our um, Jubilee Day is and that sort of thing. And the mayor of Moscow actually has the clouds sprayed with a, a nitrosilvate or a silvonitrate or whatever the hell it, it's called, so that it won't rain. And it works. It's never rained on Moscow Day. <laughs> he has the, the clouds sprayed. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's almost a, a bit godlike, isn't it? Um, and uh, also, uh, remember that in 
North America particularly, but it, it's one of those things that spreads around the world. So almost every ancient civilization has done it. We have the rain dancers, um, you know, men who pound up and down and, and, and sing funny little ditties and, and so on to try and make it rain. So uh, it, it's not so unusual, I suppose, that scientists are trying it um, where medicine men uh, have been doing it for years and years and years. Well, that's what's going on across the, across the, um, the, the world that might be of interest to us in our part of the world. So uh, from Mirador country on this morning, uh, Keith Hayes saying, uh, Tara for now, toodle pip.